In this video I'm going to show you how to create a very simple web page using HTML and CSS coding. This is the page we are going to be creating. It's basically six facts about you. And in this page it includes a little bit of styling. As you can see we've got a slightly bigger header here. We've got a bit of bold text. We've got some italics text down here. We've also got a hyperlink that goes to our favorite website. We've got an email link which allows us to email that certain address. And we've also got a picture of ourselves at the bottom of the page. A fairly simple start. So let's head over to Adobe Brackets and get started on this project. Okay. When you open up Brackets for the first time, you're going to be greeted with a screen like this. Okay. It's just an example of a web page and how you can get started in Brackets. We don't need to worry about reading that. So what we're going to do is go to File and select New. And that will bring up a blank workspace ready for us to create our first web page. And before we start making our web page, we do need to set up some folders. So I want you to go into your account, so into your Documents folder. Hopefully you've got your 10 IPR folder set up. And we're going to make a new folder there called Lesson 1, Fast Facts. Okay. That's our main folder. We're going to save everything inside of that that we use today. So I'm going to open that folder up. And I want to make one more new folder. And it's called Images. When making a website, it's always good to have an images folder inside your main folder. And every picture you're using in your website should be saved into that images folder. Okay, websites don't like it if you save pictures here, there, and everywhere throughout your account. They need to be in the one location, and that is your images folder. Now in that images folder, you need to put a picture of yourself. So hopefully the teacher has supplied you with one of them, or you've taken a selfie. I'm just going to quickly go over to my pictures now and copy and paste a picture into that images folder. So I've got one to use today. Okay, so that's all done. So hopefully you've done those three things. You have created a lesson one folder, you've created an images folder inside of that, and then inside images you've copied and pasted a picture of yourself. Okay, we're now ready to get started on our web page. What I like to do first of all, before we even begin typing our code, is to go to file and save as. Okay, and I'm going to go into my documents and find that folder I just created. And there it is, Lesson 1 Fast Facts. And I'm going to save my file right there. I'm not saving it in images, it's outside that folder. And I'm just going to call it Fast Facts. I'm going to leave it all as one word. And at the end, I'm going to write .html. And that just tells the computer, hey, we're making a web page here. So when we open this file again, it's going to pop up in a web browser like Google Chrome or Internet Explorer. So we'll click Save, and we've now got our name fastfacts.html. Okay. When creating a HTML document, you want to begin with the doc type tag. Okay, so we put a pointy bracket, exclamation mark, write the word doc type, put a space, and write HTML in lowercase. And that one line of code there, that little tag, just tells the computer, or brackets in fact, that we are making a HTML document or a web page. After that, we're going to put in the HTML tags, which is like a sandwich. Okay, this is the bread on the sandwich, and all our code comes inside the HTML tags. Okay, just like in a sandwich, we have the filling in between the two pieces of bread. With HTML, we've got HTML tags as the sandwich, oh, sorry, as the bread, and all our filling comes in between, and that's our code. So the first part of our web page is the head section. This gives us a bit of information about our page. Okay, it doesn't actually get displayed in the web browser. What we are going to put inside this head section is a title. So let's open up a title tag. And the title of our page is just Fast Facts About Me. You can give it another title if you'd like, but that is going to appear in the tab of our web browser. Okay, so if I save this, I'm going to go over to my account and go into my Lesson 1 Fast Facts. And there's my web page saved right there. I'll just make that a bit bigger so you can see it. And you can see when I double click on this, it will open up my web page in Google Chrome. Okay. My computer is a little bit slow, but once it's finished loading, you'll notice that the name of the tab up here is Fast Facts About Me. Okay. So when I go back to here, I could change this. So I could write Six Fast Facts about Mr. Baitup. If I just press Control S to do the quick save, go back to my web browser, 
and refresh that, you can see that my tab has changed to six fast facts about Mr. Baitup. Okay, so you can put whatever you want in your title, okay, as long as it's sensible. So that's our head section all finished off. Okay, there's not much going in the head section for now, just a title. So we're going to go below the head tags now, and we're going to begin our body. This is the main part of our website. Okay, so we, whatever we put inside the body tags appears on our web page. It's the visual components. So inside the body tags, let's begin with that nice big heading. So to put in a nice big heading, you use the tags H1. It stands for the biggest size heading. And we're just going to write six fast facts about this debater. You can write your name there instead of mine. Okay. As I press Control S and save that, we'll just refresh our page and we'll see we've got a nice big heading appearing in our page now. You can change the size of these headings all the way down to H6. So you can go H2, H3, H4, and H6 is the smallest. So if I just change these to H3, I'll just give you a quick example of how that would look. That's an example of a H3 heading. Okay, H1 is the best, so I'm going to stick with a H1 heading for now. Nice and big. Hey, below that, we're going to start putting in some random facts about ourselves. So we'll write, my name is, and I'm just going to write my name. Now, after I've written my name, I'll just go down to the next line here. And these P brackets I'm adding in, uh, these P tags, just stand for a new paragraph. So each time you put in the letter P in a pair of pointy brackets, it makes a new paragraph on your page. And you'll see what I mean in just a moment. So I'm going to write something like, my favorite color is blue. I'll just add one more fast fact in here for the minute. Uh, my favorite food is chocolate. All right. I was going to press Control S to save that. And I'm going to pop back over to my web browser and just refresh the page. And you can see I'm starting to get my fast facts appearing one by one. Okay, as I'm making a new paragraph for each one, it makes a new paragraph with this little P tag right here. So let's just add one more fast fact in. Uh, my favorite TV show is right, Breaking Bad. All right, so there are general facts all put in, so we can save that. What's coming up next is a hyperlink to our favorite website. So we'll add a new paragraph by putting the P tag in. We'll write my favorite website is, and I'm going to write Google. Now I'm going to turn that into a hyperlink shortly, but not just yet. Okay. On the next line, we need to write my email address is, and just write an email address for me. All right. We're going to turn that into an email link shortly as well, but not just yet. The last thing we're going to add in in a new paragraph. I'm going to go down two lines so you can see this a bit better is an image. Okay, and the way we do that, we put in a new paragraph and then we write in brackets. So in a new tag, IMG and then SRC. That stands for image source. And we write equals and brackets will do the rest for you. So I'm going to select that images folder. It's going to say look inside your images folder and select this picture here, which is the geek.jpg picture. That's the picture of me that I wanted to include before. Let me just close off our pointy bracket there. So this tag says image source equals look inside your images folder and select the picture of you. In my case, it's the geek picture. Okay, so I'm going to save that and let's have a look at how our web page is looking now. So we've got all our facts in and we've got this image that's appeared at the bottom. It is quite large, so I'm going to have to resize that now. Quick way to resize it is by simply going inside this image tag just after the quotation marks and writing width equals, and you give it a width that you want it to be. I'm just going to write 200 pixels. Close the quotation marks. And I'm going to choose a height as well. So height equals, and in quotation marks, I'll make it a little bit longer. I'll write 300 pixels. And when I save that, I'll just go back and test it. Just refresh the page and you get a much smaller picture that fits in nicely. Alrighty, let's keep going. 
We'll get these links working now, I think. So, Google is our favorite website. We need to turn that word there, Google, into a hyperlink. So what we do is click just before the letter G. And we're going to open up a tag that's called A space href. Okay, and then we write equals. And in quotation marks, we write the website we want our link to go to. So one's http colon forward slash forward slash www.google.com. And I'll close off my quotation mark, close off my pointy bracket. You'll notice this little A appears, and that's just closing our hyperlink off. What I'm going to do is delete that, and I'm going to put it after the word Google. So here's this little A here. So whatever comes inside this section, in this case it's the word Google, that's going to be our hyperlink. Alrighty, so when I press save, just control S, I'll go back to the web browser and watch the word Google here. When I refresh the page, it will turn into a hyperlink. When I click on that, yes, my internet is a bit slow, so it's going to take a little while to load. That should take me to Google. Okay, and you can start to see Google loading now. So it's all's working well with that. Let's go back here, and this time we're going to make an email link. So this little section here that says my email at gmail.com, that's my email address. So I need to turn that into an email link. And we do it in a pretty similar way to what we just did above. So just before my email address, I'm going to open up a tag and write ahref. And I'm going to do equals. And with quotation marks, I'm going to write the word mail to. It's all one word. Then I'll do a colon. And I'm going to write my email address again. So my email at gmail.com. I'll close my quotation marks up, close off my pointy bracket, and you'll see this little A appears again, the closing link tag. We need to delete that from there and put it after our email address. Okay, so here's our link, ahref equals, we put our mail to word first, colon, then our email address. We close off our quotation marks, close our pointy bracket, and then comes our email address, which is going to be linked up as an email link. And then we close off the link tag altogether. Okay, so I'll press Control S to save it. Go back to my web browser and preview it again. And you can see that this is now an email link. When I click it, what it does is opens up a program like Microsoft Outlook or even Gmail on some computers. Just depends what email account you've got set up on your computer. And that will allow us to send an email to that address. Okay, my computer's pretty slow, but it is opening up Outlook. And you can see we've got my email at gmail.com right there, ready to be sent. Okay, I'm just going to close that because I don't want to send it. It's just an example. Okay, so this page is pretty much all done, except for a little bit of styling. I want to add a little bit of CSS code, so cascading style sheet code, to make this a look a little bit better than what it does now. So I'm going to go back to brackets, and what I'm going to do is go to my body tag up here. We're going to style up the body first of all. So after the word body, it's still inside the tag, I'm going to put a space and write style equals, and in quotation marks, let's start with a background color. So I'm going to write background, dash, and then spell color the American way. I'm going to do a colon, and just choose a color. I'm going to choose yellow, and then close my quotation marks. So we've added in style equals, in quotation marks, background color, colon, yellow. You can choose any color, really. It's up to you. Okay, but I'm going to go yellow for this example. I'll save it and test it. And that's made our background color yellow. Quite bright and quite hard to look at, so I think I need to tone that yellow down. So a cool feature in brackets is that I can go up to this word yellow and right-click on it and choose quick edit. That brings up a color box and allows me to choose another color. So I'm just going to choose a lighter color by moving these levers around a little. And I can hit the cross when I'm done. And that types in the hexadecimal code for you that will bring up a brand new color that looks a, a lot better, a lot easier to read this text with. Another thing that we might do to this text to make it even easier to read is change the font to a sans serif font. And what that means is that it won't have little curly um, little pieces or little caps on the end of each letter, like little feet. At the moment my text, if we zoom in here, has little caps at the end of each letter. You might be able to see them curling off 
each letter there. They're called serifs. Okay, and what I'm going to do is just go back in here and still inside this style section up in my body tag. I'm going to stay inside the uh, quotation marks here. I'm just going to delete them actually, the quotation marks, and put a semicolon. And I'm going to write font dash family colon and just write sans dash serif and then close my quotation marks again. So this little piece of code here will change all of the font in our body, which is the entire web page, to a sans serif font. I'll save that and show you what I mean. I'll zoom in a bit here. So watch these letters with little caps on the end. As I refresh it, it will change so they do not have little caps on the end of each letter now. That's a sans serif font. And sans serif fonts are known to be a lot easier to read on web pages okay, or on computer screens. So, stick with a sans serif font if you can when you're making your web pages. A lot easier to read than a serif font. Okay, another thing we might do is add some bold text into our page. Okay, so I'm going to put my answers in bold. So in the first question it says, my name is, and we've got Mr. Bait up. So I'm going to change that to have Mr. Bait up in bold. So just before Mr. Bait up, I'm going to write the word strong inside a tag. Okay, I'm going to just delete that closing strong tag and instead I'm going to put it after the word Mr. Bait up. So you can see Mr. Bait up now is surrounded by strong tags and what that does is make our text bold. So I'm just going to do that by copying and pasting the strong tag and putting it before each answer in my four first questions. And I'll copy the closing strong tag and place it after each answer. Okay, so look at this last example. We've got Breaking Bad is my answer. Strong comes before it, and then it closes off after it. And that will make our answer bold. So I'll save that up, and let's have a quick look at our answers now. You can see they've changed into bold text. Okay, it's looking really good. Um, something else we might be able to do is change the color of our heading up here. Okay, so what we can do here, instead of styling up the body, which affects everything on our web page, we can just style up the H1 tags, which just changes our heading. So I'm going to go inside the H1 tag here and write style equals, and in quotation marks I'll write color the American way, do a colon, I'll just select blue, and close my quotation marks. And that little bit of code there, color blue, will change the color of our text to blue. So I'll save it again, give it a preview, Okay, don't really like that blue, so just go back and change it to another color. I might just go red. I'll save it, test it. There we go, we've got some red text. Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you now is with this hyperlink here. I'm going to show you how to open it up in a new tab at the top of your page. Okay, it's quite simple to do. So I'll find this link down here in my code, which shows me the link to Google. I'm just going to go after google.com there, after those quotation marks, and I'm going to write target equals, and brackets will help you out here. We just want to choose underscore blank, so in quotation marks, write underscore blank, and that basically says open that link up in a new blank tab when we press on that link. Okay, so that's our code. Just double check that you've got your code exactly the same as mine, or pretty close to mine. Save it up test it and we should have a working web page like that. If I click on Google now you'll notice that it comes up in a new tab at the top of the page and Google is starting to open. Alrighty so that's how you make a very simple web page using HTML and CSS.